Hey, my milkshake. Yeah. Well, I'm not busy, but why are you asking? Oh, what was I doing? Well, I was reading a story. Well, no, it wasn't a really long novel or anything. It was just a short story. Yeah, nothing special, but it was still fun. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sure, I can tell you what it was called. It was called... Just Trying to Hang Out. I thought it was interesting, so I decided to give it a try. Hmm? Oh, well, you want to hear it? Uh, are you sure? I thought I, my voice would get pretty boring. You seriously want me to read it to you? R right! Okay. Sure. I, I guess I can read it to you. But... Okay. So... S sit next to me. Cuddle up close. <laughs> yeah, we can get some extra cuddles in if we want. Okay, perfect. Pull up the story on my computer. And there we go. Ready? Okay. Get nice and comfy, okay? <laughs> now, let's start. So, when do you want to meet up tonight? Patricio O'Higgins was talking into his mobile phone to John Fisher. There was a pause as John delivered his answer. So, right now is good? Another pause. Awesome. Say, so are you home right now? A yet further pause. John? One more pause. John, are you there? Patricio looked at his phone. Lost connection? David Vigello said, said to him. Sorry. Vallejo. <laughs> you got this, Agakure. Yeah. Lost the connection somehow. Patricio and David were sitting together in the living room of the O'Higgins house. It was a Friday afternoon. School had just about ended, about an hour and a half earlier. So, we don't know where he is, David said. Patricio answered. Well, the last thing I heard him say was, Nope, I'm dot dot dot. So we know he's at least not home. Could he still be at Montenegro? David asked in reference to the high school all three of them attended. David and Patricio were already heading out the door to look for their mutual friend. It's possible, Patricio said as they both entered his car. I'm not sure why he would still be there, though. After a short drive, they arrived at Montenegro High School and went into the building. They began scouring the hallways for John, but found little besides a haunting emptiness. Students and faculty alike, it seemed, were eager to spend as little time there as possible. The few people still present were associated with the school's football team, which had a game scheduled later that evening. Though the general attitude towards the football team among the student body was sometimes between admiration and worship, David and Patricio had little interest in it. Their aloofness was an act of rebellion against the semi-compulsory semi enthusiasm. Consequentially, they barely knew any of the people associated with the team, with one notable exception. Hey guys, what are you still doing here? A familiar voice called for, to them from behind. They turned around to see their friend, Pavel Magnus, dragging a huge translucent cloth bag. What's in there? Patricio asked him. Pavel answered, helmets and shoulder pads mainly. Pavel was the equipment manager for the football team. I hope they're paying you good money for this, David commented. Pavel responded, They're not paying me anything. I'm a volunteer. I guess you do it because you love the work, huh? David said. Yeah, I suppose you could put it that way, Pavel said. What are you guys still doing here? Patricio said, We're looking for John. Do you know where he is? No, I haven't seen him recently, Pavel answered. Why are you guys looking for him? We just want to hang out with him. 
Patricia said. I'm sure Pavel could add in more. David slightly changed the subject. You know, Pavel, I've always sort of wondered, what exactly is it about this unpaid job that you enjoy so much? Oh, you know, I just enjoy contributing something to the school community. School community? Give me a break. This place isn't a freaking community. That's the kind of propaganda answer Andolini trains people to say, David said, referencing the school's principal. What's the reason? Well, David, I know this may be difficult for you to comprehend, but some of the people on the football team I consider friends, Paybell said. They're fun to talk to, and I respect them. Do they respect you? David asked. To which P Pavel said, Yeah, I, I think so. So what do you talk about with your football player friends? Patricia said. I'm curious about this too. People responded. Oh, you know, we talk about sports. Obviously, David said, nodding his head. And girls, people went on. You mean girls in their anatomy, right? Patricia asked. Well, if you want to put it that way. Ugh. What else do you talk about with these mush heads? David asked. The latest C++ updates? David, they're not as dumb as you make them out to me, Pavel responded. Some of them are, I'll admit, but a lot of them aren't. David asked, some of the people on the football team are intelligent? Pavel responded, yeah, I would say some of them are quite intelligent. Really? David said with a sarcastic grin. Can you name three quite intelligent people on the football team? Uh, well, Pavel said, Carlo, he's on the team. Carlo, he's your example of a quite intelligent football player? Yeah, he's number one in our class, David, Pavel said. Is that so, David said. Patricia confirmed the information. I believe it is so. Well, maybe Carlo is pretty smart. I won't deny that, but David drifted off. But what? Pavel wanted elaboration. David paused before answering. Intelligence is not wisdom. You consider him to be lacking in wisdom? Pavel asked. I consider him an unthinking conformist, David said. In other words, a normie? Pavel said. David responded. Yeah, a normie. I consider him a normie. He's much smarter than the average normie, but he's certainly a normie. Of course he is, David, Pavel said. Now, as much as I enjoyed this chat, I have duties to perform. Unpaid duties, as you would say. So, you don't have any idea where John is, Patricio said, ringing up their original reason for being here. As Pavel continued dragging his bag of equipment, he said, Well, I seem to recall him mentioning there was going to be some big event at Frito's Electronics tonight. I don't remember what it was, though. He could be there. Well, that's certainly a useful clue, David said. Thank you for that information. You're very welcome, friends, Pavel said. David and Patricia returned to the latter's car and journeyed next to one of their favorite locations, Frito's Electronics. On Friday evenings, the place was usually packed, but the parking lot was almost totally empty when they arrived, and the entrance of the store was blocked with barricades toppled with barbed wire. A strange sight indeed. As they walked up to the barricades, they noticed two individuals crouched down behind them, they were peering out over the top of the barricades through a small gap in the barbed wire. When Patricio and David were close enough, an unknown voice cried out, Halt! Who goes there? At that moment, a searchlight came on and blasted them both with illumination. What the heck is going on here? David asked. Another voice. This one more familiar. The store is closed until 8pm. You're not getting your precious mangas a second before that. Mr. Yamato? Patricia said. Is that you? One of the crouching individuals stood up, revealing that he was wearing a business suit and had a rising sun headband wrapped around his forehead. It was unmistakably Mr. Yamato, the store's manager and a dear friend of Patricio, David, and John. What are you doing here? He asked them. We're looking for John, but I guess he's not here, David responded. Mr. Yamato said, Mr. Fisher? No, he's not here right now. There are no customers here at all. We're closed. We can see that. What's going on? Why is the place barricaded like this? 
Patricio said. Oh. Did you... <laughs> you fell asleep. I guess I really am that boring, huh? <laughs> Sleep well. Sleep well, my milkshake. 